What's more terrifying than grabbing a tree branch and realizing it's a snake? It has got to be this flying snake heading straight for your face. Found in the forests of South and Southeast Asia, the flying snake is the only known limbless vertebrate that can fly. How are these snakes able to fly? Why would a snake need to fly? And what can we learn from flying snakes? Trust in me and I'll bring you the answers. Wow, that was creepier than I planned. Sorry, guys. There are five known species of Chrysopelia, or flying snakes, and four of them can flatten their bodies into a ribbon-like wing and glide between trees. Flying snakes can grow to about 1.2 meters long. They eat birds, lizards, and other small animals, but you will never find this type of snake on the ground, making them harder to spot. Their name is a bit misleading as they aren't really flying. Technically, they're gliding through the air. And their flight speed and travel distance depend on how high a branch they launch from. The longest distance a flying snake can glide is about seven meters. That happens when it's launching from a height of 75 meters. And the fastest it can speed along is 10 meters per second. An elongated tube-like body is not ideal for flying. So to get airborne, a flying snake rotates its ribs forward and backward to flatten itself out. It's kind of like how a cobra opens up its hood. This allows the snake to ride the air and use gravity for acceleration. If you were lucky enough to see a flying snake up close, you'd notice that as the middle of its body flattens, it gets twice as wide. You might even see the bump of its heart under its skin. Sometimes you can even see undigested food lumps sticking out of its flat middle. A little less cool. But the tail remains rounded to get a good grip on the branch it's about to launch off. This is its usual launching off position. From here, the flying snake plunges the front of its body downward. Its head starts arcing upwards and its belly faces the side. It soars up and forward to rise above the branch. Reaching out into the air and arcing away from the branch, the snake will finally release its grip and swerve its belly 90 degrees toward the ground. This snake is now airborne. But sometimes a flying snake skips this artful launch off. When fleeing a predator, it will slither sideways and nosedive straight off the branch. Can't say I blame them. But this type of takeoff doesn't let the snake travel too far and makes for a wonky flight. And then there's the challenge of staying airborne. To do this, the flying snake seems to be tapping into its basic reptilian instincts. It slithers through the air, like its cousins would on the ground. But it doesn't just undulate on a horizontal axis. It also makes small waves on a vertical plane throughout its body, making more stable flights over much longer distances. But why go through all this effort to fly? No one is entirely sure why these snakes took to the air, but if the behavior of other gliding animals is any indication, it's likely just a matter of catching prey, escaping predators, and good old common sense. I mean, if you're a tree dweller, you're better off learning to glide between the treetops. That's way more efficient than climbing all the way up and down trees. But could you get killed in a venomous snake air raid? Of all the species of flying snakes, C. ornata is the only one temperamental enough to strike at anything that moves. But no flying snakes have ever killed a human. People bitten by flying snakes report mild symptoms like pain, drowsiness, or headache, and usually recover fully within days. And luckily, there have been no instances of flying snakes landing on human faces or other body parts. If anything, the snake stands to lose its teeth and get an infection from biting a human. But these fascinating creatures have triggered scientific innovation. The flying snake's movement mechanics are inspiring the design of insect-sized drones. And robotics engineers are studying the flying snake's combination of horizontal and vertical undulation to help them build robots that can climb through rubble and up the sides of buildings. This could help search and rescue operations. 
If you haven't slithered away at the thought of these snakes flying at you, watch our episode about how pythons eat their prey whole. You will not believe what this python swallowed. Flattening their bodies and gliding through the air is what flying snakes do, and that's why they're crazy creatures.